Welcome to the Voice of Jesus. My name is Randolph Kubitschek and welcome to the Daily Challenge, Day 8. We've seen in the last few days, we've had some incredible uh, teaching on about attitudes and about thinking and about the way we react to things. And we're going to continue in that type of theme. And today it's going to be learning to be grateful. Once again, we always start just with breathing, just breathe in and out three times, just, just relax. You know, like I said, you receive better. You're in a better state of mind. You don't have to think about those things that are troubling you. And I want you to just think now why we should be grateful. There are so many things to be grateful for. and I'm grateful for my parents and I'm grateful for God has blessed me in my life and God has given me a wonderful family. God has given me wonderful things in my life. But, you know, even just the little things. I mean, so many times, I mean, my mother kept on telling me many times, she says, you know, it doesn't cost you anything. Learn just to be polite. Learn to be grateful. Learn to say please. Learn to say thank you. Learn to be appreciative about the things. Um, I remember when we first started our, our ministry years ago, and uh, actually it was this ministry, The Voice of Jesus. I don't know how many years we've been doing this now. And we started, and we started in a very little small studio. We just had this old kitchen top we had. Put it on on uh, some, some uh, what was it? On another table, it was actually it was a kids' table, and uh, we started with this old camera and all that. So we started very humbly, and you know we we told people what we're doing. People were interested, and they said we'll support you. And we were supporting ourselves at the time, you know, in the church because we we're pastoring the church and we we're building up the whole church because we were, we were expanding in the ministry. And one lady gave me fifty crones, which is like two American dollars. And do you know what? I rejoiced in that. I wrote this lady such a beautiful letter. It was like it was a gift of $50,000 to me. But when she sent that 50 cranes, I was just grateful that God spoke to her heart to bless us. It was like the woman with the two mites. And I know she didn't have much, but you know what? She blessed us. And she was grateful. I was grateful. And that's how we should be. But the Bible says this, and I want to read this. I'm going to read this from the, from the uh, English Standard Version. Back in Colossians. You know, Colossians is a terrific book about Christian living. It says here in Colossians 3.16 to 17, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Now, Jesus is teaching us to be grateful, to be thankful for all things. Do you know, sometimes people say, well, I've got nothing to be grateful for. You know, my life has been hard. I've had to do this. I've had to suffer. You know, we've all had to suffer. We've all had to go through hardships. No matter who you are, where you are. People say, well, he's got money. You know what? Let me tell you this. I know quite a few rich people. They suffer more than the poor people. They worry at night about their their their, their investments and their their properties and their businesses and their employees. They worry. They've got more worries than what you have, probably. And and a lot of them are not grateful and thankful for what God's done in their lives. We've got to be careful there too, because remember this, nothing's really ours anyway. We're only stewards on this earth to 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 manage that or what God has blessed us with. You know, in Deuteronomy 8.18, it says, God is the one who's given us wealth to get it, the strength to get our wealth. So remember, nothing's really yours. It's just here on loan. You're on loan here. You're only here on a holiday for a certain time until the time comes when Jesus will return and he'll separate the sheep and the goats. Modern society has taught us to be ungrateful. You know, we have these uh, civil liberties. We have this um, self-entitlement today where, well, it has to be. Well, that's what you say. You know, um, the Bible says, you know, in, in, uh, about inheritance. Well, it's true, but if you don't feel like you want to give anything to your children, you don't want to give them any inheritance, you don't have to. You know, they said the inheritance is from the children's children. But an inheritance too early is not a blessing, the Bible says. So we've got to be careful in that there too. The Bible's never wrong, my friends. The more you read, the more you understand it, the more you understand a bit about this life. 
I think because we've become ungrateful in this world, in this society, because we have too much of everything. You know, when um, I, I speaking to a lot of elderly people, and I love speaking to elderly people. I have my mother's cousin, he's 93. And he's like a walking encyclopedia. He's been through the hardships of life. He started, actually, he went into the army when he was in Egyptian, the British army, when he was 15 or 16. And they didn't have much. In those days, there was nothing much at all. And you're talking about World War I, literally. And, uh, well, just after World War I. And you just think about it. People went through the Great Depression. People went through world wars. They went through um, uh, dictatorships. Yet they still survived. People went through the Holocaust. Still survived. I believe today, if if our internet doesn't work, first thing the kids do is, oh, is there internet? And they go, oh, is there internet? Is there a good internet? And if the internet fails, man, it's like World War Three. I'm serious. I mean, that's more important to them than just being grateful to God that they're healthy, they've got food on their plate, they've got clothes on their back, they've got a roof over their head. They need to learn to be grateful for those things. It could always be worse, couldn't it? But it's not in most cases. I mean, it's sad to say there's about two and a half billion people that go hungry every night, live on a dollar a day. So are we in this modern society worse off? You know, we, we have sponsored kids through um, Compassion for many years now. Actually, 10 years we had an anniversary just on one of our children. And I said, wow, it's gone so quick. When I get letters from these kids, I, it brings tears to my eyes. The gratefulness of these children, and when we send them, like, say, $100 to their Christmas day, or they buy all these things, they have tears of joy. They express their gratitude, their gratefulness, their thankfulness by these gifts. And here in this world, you buy them a pair of shoes for $100. I don't like the color. And they're not modern enough. They don't light up. They haven't got a brand name on it. Really. That's how we are today. That's what we've come to in this world. My friends, what we learn, what we need to learn to do is to be thankful and grateful for the things in this life. For the little things, for everything. You know, um, even when I go to the forest or I'm, or I'm in Australia down the beach, you know, I thank God. I said, God, I thank you. You created this for me. This is for me to enjoy here. And you created this for your people here on this earth, for well, people, for people in general, the world, for us to enjoy your creation. So I'm going to worship the creator of the creation. So I'm thankful for that. I mean, just to get up every morning, even if you're tired or whatever the case is, Lord, I'm thanking you. I'm, I'm still going to praise you, Lord. Actually, there's a very good Bible that's just brought to my mind. And, uh, and actually, was, I think it relates to Jonah and the whale too, but this is in Hebrews. And if I remember the verse correctly, it's um, Hebrews 13, 15, if I remember it. And, uh, yes, it is. It's 13, 15, Hebrews 13, 15. It says, through him, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips that acknowledge his name. You know, it's, it's, it's some, some things, translation says, um, let us offer a, sac uh, um, a voice of thanksgiving and praise. I think that's in, in the NIV. Let's offer a thanksgiving and praise to him. You know, have you ever noticed how people react when they're in a food line? People are hungry, they need, they want their food, and, and there's a line and somebody's waiting in the queue or at the grocery store. Or, <laughs> we're in the other day in a, in a grocery store, and uh, I don't know how to pick them. I don't know. I always pick the wrong ones. And it looks like there was a big line where we were, and I said, let's move over. There's only two people in that one, and there's five people here. Sure enough, we moved to the line with these two people, and this guy got stuck with his payment. His cards didn't work, he didn't have the money, and then he had to call somebody over, the manager had to come over, and we saw those five people just go straight out. And I thought, wow, I said to my wife, look, um, there's one thing I have to admit, I don't know how to pick it. She said, well, either do I. So I said, it doesn't make any difference. And uh, 
the people who were in front of us, the other two people, they were complaining and <sighs> and I sort of like sort of like started to follow the business. Yeah, it is taking a bit long. And then I thought to myself, I thought, God, I thank you that we have money in our pocket to pay for this food. Thank you, Father God, we can buy what we like to eat, our desires of our heart. Thank you, Father. You know, I, I was I was just there, there and then I just thought to how grateful we should be that we have an opportunity to do the things we can do, and yet in some places where they don't have the opportunity, because there's no choice. They just gotta swallow it and say, This is life. I gotta live in a tent, I get one meal a day, it's rice. But they're happy. So be grateful, be thankful, and appreciate what you have. My father told me one time, he said, if you, if you don't if you can't have what you like, like what you have. If you can't have what you like, like what you already have. Do you know how it's amazing when a new phone comes out? <gasps> My phone is already old. It's only two years old or six months old. And it's a new phone. I need a new phone. I need to keep up with the Joneses. I need to keep up with this trend. No, you don't. No, you don't. Just be you. Just be you. You don't have to worry about what other people think about you, whether you have a good phone, a, 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 a labeled phone, or a labeled clothing, or a labeled car. You just be you because you'll be the happiest when you're just you and not anybody else and you'll be the happiest when you're thankful and grateful oh gee that's that's a handful isn't it stress control learn the stress to work for you i believe because we're ungrateful and we're not appreciative about things that creates stress it you know with some people, it's never, ever good enough. No matter what you do for them, it's never, ever good enough. Some people will just remain negative. They'll remain continually gossiping and backbiting and whinging and whining and complaining. And when I think about that, just on that thought, what stopped the children of Israel to enter into the Promised Land? One thing, complaining. That's all it was, they're complaining. They complained to God constantly, day in and day out. Did they enter? No, they didn't. So there's another thing. So this creates stress as well. But if we learn to control our attitudes, our way of thinking, our appreciation, our gratefulness unto God, our stress levels would lower. There'd be less cortisol in our body that would we not overreact to, to cause all the other Hormones to overact in our body that causes sickness and disease. So put that energy into a into a uh, into a positive way. Learn to count your blessings. Do you know if you'd wake up every single morning and you'd say to yourself, "You know what? I got a lot on today. I'm not feeling the best. I'm tired. I didn't sleep. I'm feeling a bit grumpy," and we've all been there. Learn to count your blessings. Father, I'm thanking you right now. I'm thanking you, Lord God, that I can get up and I can walk. I'm not in a wheelchair. And even if you are in a wheelchair, you can still raise your hands, your voice and your heart unto God and say, God, I thank you. Thank God I don't have to go to the oncologist today. Thank you, God, I'm healthy and strong. Thank you, Father God, I was warm. I, I haven't got the rain coming through my And even if it does, you can still praise God. I'm still alive. You know, when you listen to those Holocaust survivors, through World War Two, they had horrible situations, horrible circumstances. Yet, a lot of them had their mindset on something else, not the horror, and they got through it. No matter what your circumstance is, if you start thanking God, start praising God, start saying, "Lord, I'm thanking you for what you've given me, and I know you've got better things for me, Lord. I'm grateful for you, Lord." I thank you. God can turn around any situation, no matter what it is, no matter how hard, how long it is that you're going through, God can change that, that situation. You see, this is the advantage that we have as a believer. We have a covenant with God. See, the, the non-believer hasn't got a covenant with God, so they don't know what, what to stand on. They, they've got nothing to, to, to say, well, God, you said. You see, this is a covenant. You can, you can say, God, you said here. My God shall supply all my needs according to 
his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.19 you can say that. God, that's your covenant promise. That's your words to me. Thank you, Lord. That's mine. Faith. Faith. See, God loves you enough to give you a promise like that. You have to have enough faith to receive his love and say, God, that's a promise given to me in love. I receive that for my life. That will change everything. Absolutely everything. Because now you're still, like I said, you're still under that new covenant promise. And God ain't changing his mind unless you do. See, God will never alter the words that come out of his lips. Um, Psalm 89, 34. We have a living hope. We have eternal life. We have God's daily blessings. We have forgiveness. There's some of the things I just wrote down just to think and help you understand what you have. Because if I'm a believer and you're a believer, you have the same thing as I do. Do you know we have the same Holy Spirit that Jesus has? We have the same blessings that Jesus had whilst he was on this earth. We have the blessings of Abraham and more. Because Abraham wasn't under a new covenant. He was under an old covenant. He was under law. But now under this new covenant with all the blessings that God has given us. Wow. We can be thankful and grateful for these things. We can all make choices. But how do we make choices? This is a good question. You see, we can make a choice to be happy or not be happy. We can have a choice to think right or not think right. We can have it. We can have, make that choice to be appreciative or non-appreciative, negative or positive. You see, your choices will always come by the way you think, and your choices that you make by your attitudes, your thinking, and your gratefulness will be your life's outcome. What you sow is what you reap. If you've been negative, ungrateful all your life, guess what's going to come around you? Ungratefulness and unthankful people in your life. And you're going to why? You're going to ask yourself why? Why do I get always these nerds in my life? These ungrateful, unthankful people. I'll tell you the reason as to why. Maybe you didn't know that, but it's been, it's been you all your life. The way you've been interacting, the way you've been speaking, you just attracted the negative on your side. Because what you sow is what you're going to reap. It's going to, what, what is it? What comes around goes around? <laughs> so, what kind of attitude and info are you making with your choices? Take hold of your thoughts. You know, there's another thing is that um, people have a choice, even if they have good education, they have a choice to choose right. People today don't want to choose right for one simple reason is because they're stubborn. They're, 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 they're hard-hearted. They're, they've got a, they're, their thinking is deranged, if I want to put it that way. I know best. I don't know. I, that, that's, that to me is, they have to do that for me. You know what? Um, I've seen some real loving parents give their children everything and the children are still ungrateful. No, oh, that's a normal thing. That's what a parent should do. Yeah, the parent does it out of love, not out of not out of need or anything else. But he does it out of love. So this is, here's a question you're going to have to ask yourself: What you're giving? What are you? What is your? What is the response on the other end? Are they getting benefit by you just giving all the time? Here's a question you're going to have to ask yourself: Because sometimes, what we do and go the extra mile with some people, and they're unappreciative. It's not for their benefit also. Sometimes people have to learn on their own two feet. They'll stand on their own two feet. Here's a question you should be asking yourselves. How do you feel emotionally, physically, and mentally? And the way you feel, how does this affect your thinking? Now, I've, I've written down some practical steps here. And I think this is, this is great because this helps the emotional, the physical, and the mental in our life every single day. And number one is, thank God for every moment of the day. Whatever you're doing right now, this moment, and when you before you go to bed or you just got up in the morning, thank God for this moment. Father, thank you so much. I am grateful for you so much that you've done so much for me in my life. And maybe you're going through difficulty in your life at this point in time. I can't thank God. It's just too hard. 
No, 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 you can. Because through the thanksgiving and the praise, it's releasing your faith for God's promise to activate in your life. Because that's all God's looking for is faith. You can, we can't please God without faith. See, His love, your faith combined together will inherit the promises of God. So be thankful. Be grateful even for the smallest things in life. You know, if somebody just gave you a hug or they, they, they gave you a sip of their drink or uh, brought you a, a, a chocolate or something, just be grateful. Oh, thank you so much. Just be grateful for those small things in life. I mean, that makes a huge difference. And not only it impacts uh, you, it impacts the others. Just a smile. You know, if, if you can just smile to somebody, I mean, that's one of the greatest gifts you can give somebody today, just a smile. Stop complaining and enjoy life. Stop your whining. Stop your whinging. Stop it. Stop it in Jesus' name. Stop your complaining. Start to enjoy life. Start to breathe, smell the roses. Get the fresh air out there. Get staying in the sun for 10 minutes. Get some vitamin D in your body. Do these things for yourself. These are the things that we start to need to do in order for us to enjoy what God has given us. He's given us a creation for us to enjoy. So we give thanks back to the Creator. But stop your whining, stop your whinging, stop your complaining. That will get you nowhere. That will only get you sick. Sick physically, mentally and, and, and physically. Number four. Know that you're loved and appreciated by God. God created you in His image. So if he created you in his image, he must, if he loves himself, which he does, we must love ourselves and he must love us. So we need to be appreciated by God and appreciate God himself. So if we look at it in a nutshell, God's saying, I created you like me. I put my love in you. I want you to give that love back to me because all I'm doing is pouring out my love into you. Being thankful. Thankful for who he is. Thank you, Father, for who you are. Thank you that you sent Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, I didn't have to pay that ransom price at the cross, but your son did. And you only had one to give him, but you gave him to me because you loved me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, you know what prayer should be? Prayer should just be, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I just read about what you said, what you promised me in this world. I'm going to thank you for it in Jesus' name. That's prayer. That's worship. That's, that's thanking unto God. Vent your stress in areas of exercise or hobbies or go for walks or talk with somebody. Vent those stressful things that are in your life. Because remember this, when you're stressful and you're tense, it's hard to be appreciative. It's hard to be thankful. You become a grump. You become a whine. All you're doing is just bringing negativity. And I'll tell you one thing, that reflects quicker than any disease you can possibly think. It's contagious. People get it. If you walk into a room full of grunts and they're whinging and whining and all that stuff and you come in there, it wouldn't take long for that to affect you. And they say, and what do you think? Isn't that... And you could say, well, yeah. No, you don't have to, to conform to this world. You don't have to conform to the negativity of this world. You have your own two legs to stand on. And you have Christ in you. Where are we? One, two, three, four, five, six. Number six. Check your attitude towards things. What is your attitude towards situations? What is your attitude to every circumstance and event that happens in your life on a daily basis? Is it positive or is it negative? When you go to work, do you look at everything in a negative? You got a bad boss? Well, then don't, don't, don't think about your boss. Just think about your job. If you go to family, there's a family member there. Don't think about the family member. Think about the good things that can happen in the family. If you have sickness in your body and, you, and you, you're trying to um, understand how, what, what's going to happen in your life, just have the attitude, you know what? If Jesus says, I'm healed, I'm healed. And I'm going to thank him for it. There are just attitudes you can take. The way of thinking, it's a choice. It's a choice. You choose to think positive. You choose to have the right attitude. You choose to be thankful and grateful unto God. Number seven, choose carefully your words, your thoughts, and your actions. Choose them carefully. You know, I was doing a program this morning with Pastor Merrick, and 
He said, you know, it's funny because God gave us two ears and one mouth. He said, so we should be quick to listen and slow to speak. And I said, how many of us are always quick to talk and slow to listen? So choose your words correctly, wisely. Um, no coarse language, no profanity. That's not needed in life. Um, people who swear, and they've got a lot of anger, a lot of tension in their life. They've got a lot of... Uh, I don't know if I use the right word, mental disturbances in their lives. I don't know what, how, to, how to define that. But listen, you don't have to be like that. You can change the way you... If, listen, if you change the way you think, you're going to change the way you talk. Then when you're going to change the way you talk, you're going to change the way you act. So one follows the other. And the last one, and I think this is important, the last one here. Get enough rest, sleep, good food and enjoyment. See, that's what I've been working on in the last couple of months. Getting enough rest, trying to get enough sleep, getting to bed early, eating good and healthy food, and enjoying life. Getting out there, exercising every day, walking out there in the forest, on my bike, whatever the case is. See, I'm grateful for those things because God made those things for me to enjoy. And he made them for you to enjoy. So start enjoying life. Start saying, you know what, it's a new day. It's a, it's a new way. I'm going to start to be grateful and appreciative of the things i got. And when everybody's going to get on my nerves, I'm just going to laugh at that and I'm going to praise God. And you see what it will do, the effect it will have on you, others, and even the devil. Because the devil is trying to put all those things in your mind too. Don't you take that, you retaliate. You can. But you fight fire with fire, you get fire. We have a God who's gracious and loving and, and we need to thank him for it. So to remember, today's daily challenge is learn to be grateful and thankful for all things. Thank you for watching this program. Stay tuned for more and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.